Hello everybody and welcome uh, to uh, another uh, Rangers review special video, a new series we've launched, we're launching here, as you all know we've been uh, discussing, uh, recording a special uh, Todd Cantmill video for a number of days now, but uh, of course uh, in Planet Rangers things get in the way, but finally we've got the chance to sit down and discuss uh, Todd and his role at Rangers and how it has changed under uh, Philip Clement in uh, recent weeks. Uh, this is a part of a new series, incidentally, folks were looking to do uh, shorter uh, little videos just focusing on a specific topic. And I'd like to say that Joshua Barry's uh, come armed with slides and graphs and what have you to uh, discuss uh, Todd in great detail. How's it going, Joshua? Yeah, good. This isn't one for the, the people on the morning briefing who shout at me when I get a, an XG graph up or, or something, Derek. But as you say, uh, you know, a lot of what we do um, on the Rangers Review web, website is based around these kind of long-form features or delving into um, topics, whether that be tactical, um, long-form about a player's journey, whatever it may be. And hopefully what these videos will allow us to do each week is, is delve into one of these topics. Today, it's Todd Cantwell, you know, effectively why is he, he performing so well? He has four goals and five league starts and how has he adapted to a different type of number 10 role under Philippe Clement, inspired by a quote that we'll read out that Campbell gave himself a week ago saying how different that role is compared to the one that he was maybe playing at the end of last season under Michael Beale. So hopefully it allows us to, to kind of explore one of these topics together uh, in depth and, and looking forward to having a talk about Todd Campbell ahead of uh, obviously Rangers versus Ross County tonight. Yeah, uh, he's certainly... We have seen an upturn in form from him. Uh, I did say in the, the morning briefing earlier with Johnny that I was uh, really disappointed. It wasn't only one, of course, in his performance at Parkhead because I thought yeah. he, was, uh, he could be a potential game changer in that game. But uh, in recent weeks, certainly after returning from the, the winter break, he's shown more of his uh, true potential. Um, how has his role changed then, Joshua? From uh, I mean, and when he arrived last, uh, well, I, I, a year past it in January there with uh, Nico Raskin. Uh, mm -hmm. I was uh, really excited to see him in action and he and uh, Raskin really um, improved that that Rangers uh, first 11. The league was uh, pretty much a, a pipe dream then, unfortunately, mm -hmm. but certainly in, in a, a poorer side, you would say there were, there were shining lights. Um, however, uh, We've seen at the start of the season when he was dropped for that game at Kilmarnock, it raised mm -hmm. a few eyebrows, it, it's fair to say. And he was played out of position under Michael Beale. We didn't really see the best of him, uh, even under Clement. When he get hooked uh, in the first half against Aris, you're thinking is uh, is his time at Rangers perhaps uh, nearing an end under the new manager. But what has changed for for Todd uh, in uh, recent weeks? Yeah, well, let, let's start with let's start with Beale because um, I, I agree yes. there's been a lot in this last year. Derek hasn't there, and and you know he was brought in to play a very specific role. I think over the course he's a a, a good year. Um, bordering on really good in, in moments. I agree, though, that until uh, Todd Cantwell or any other attacker, Rangers attacker, the difference between an old firm goal or not at the moment is, is even more heightened than usual because it's been far too long since Rangers won a, a meaningful game in that fixture. But let, let's start by looking at what his role was under Beal. So it's important to obviously discuss the fact that Beal's football is very different from Clement's. Um, Cantwell was brought in to play one of the free roles under Beal, who wanted, he had one or two players who were totally free in the attack. Um, possession was slower, the build-up play was slower and I think Beal's philosophy was that Rangers built around these type of players like Campwell who could, you know, a lot of managers maybe rely on patterns of play in the final third. That wasn't really Beal's style at Rangers, it was more based around getting players like Campwell and Tillman and Raskin and others playing in close combination, obviously relying on the fullbacks for width and that is where your, your kind of ingenuity, ingenuity is that word, uh, comes from. Number 10s have kind of gone out of, of, of fashion, if you will, but the type of player that Campbell is, I, I, thought, I think that suited it um, very well. He wasn't normally one of the two highest players. If we, I've got a pass network here from one of the games, and he played different roles under Beal Derrick, as you say. He started kind of a deeper on the right, played at points on the left of a midfield three, and then ended the season in that number 10 slot, which is why I think so many people were frustrated when that didn't carry over into this season. We look in, in isolation when he played as the number 10 in this kind of 4-3-1-2 for the final five games of last season. This is a pass network from um, Rangers 2 Hearts 2, which was a game where Campbell scored towards the end of the season. And, and all this does is it's charting the average passing position. The larger the circle, the more involved the player is. So what should stand out to here, Derek, is Campbell's a number 10, but you know he's got three players that are ahead of him in terms of the average 
position they are on the pitch. He's almost in line with the fullbacks. He's the biggest circle because he's got the most of the ball. He is the, he's the centre of that team. And, and even when he was playing deeper, that was that was the same thing. It was his job to knit together attacks. Maybe his starting position would, would differ slightly. Maybe in this role, his requirement was to get beyond. But if we look as well, the, the successful passes he received over that five-game period, and here they are. Now, people can feel, uh, feel free to pause that. Now, for a player playing at number 10, Derek, that's a lot of passes received in your own half. It's a lot of passes mm. out wide. Not many in and around the penalty box. And when we show Campwell's passes received playing at number 10 over the last month, I, I think you'll see the difference. The point being, regardless of whether he played higher or lower on the wheel, obviously there'd be slight differences, but he was a free player able to move towards the ball, a bit of a slower pace of play. And I think when it worked, it suited him down to the ground. Um, he said just after he came to Rangers, he said, I'm enjoying myself. I said when I came here, the manager, and that was Beal at the time, is going to give me freedom um, the way I want. And I think you're starting to see the best of me because I'm picking up the ball in lots of places, unpredictability of, of, of movement. Again, I think that was a key idea. Um, and, and I don't think that worked this season for, for Beal, um, but I think that was one of the, the key tenets of, of what he wanted in an attacking sense. The reason I came here, Campbell continued, was because of the manager, um, I have a bit more freedom in terms of what you're seeing day in, day out for me. It's exactly what we planned. I know the best of me is yet to come. And we did a piece, and all the pieces we referenced, Derek, will be linked in the in the description. But one of the pieces we did on Campwell, which was particularly interesting, was with a guy called Jimmy Unwin, who was his youth coach at Norwich for a number of years. I love doing these pieces because I think you get a real sense of who the player is, um, their formative years, why they play as they play. And, and Campwell, I think Campwell is... As, as Unwin called him a maverick, he said sometimes mavericks get misread. Todd just wants to express himself. He was always hardworking. And um, for me, he stagnated a little bit in Norwich because he's not played at that number ten. Him and's had to move wide instead. Playing in the middle suits him down to the ground. If you think of the type of player Campbell is, Derek, he's a bit old-fashioned at points and times. You know, he, he's a dribbler, but he's not an explosive out wide dribbler. He's someone who feels like a, a real proper footballer because. He does things that you don't really see. Um, he, he's quite maybe a bit of a street footballer in that sense. And just one more quote before we move on. When he did a, a really interesting piece with The Athletic a couple of years ago called, uh, a few years ago, My Game and My Words, when he was talking about his dribbling style, and I think this reveals quite a lot, he says, I always base my touches off what defenders think I'm going to do and make them double think. So with that touch, the ball has been passing to me away. He's speaking at a specific example. So the defender shifts his body. I let it go across my body and then go back so he can't react at the same time because I've only thought of that at the last minute as well. Dribbling is essentially moving while protecting the ball, keeping the ball close. I never knock it and run so much because I feel like you lose a bit of control. So hopefully that gives a bit of context, I think, as to what type of player Campwell is, Derek, and why that probably proved a natural fit to Bealey, someone who, even that quote there, I've only thought about it at the last minute as well, I think spoke to the type of style Beal was trying to create with Campbell and that free role that we've seen last season. Someone who had that free role was a number 10, but a very specific type of number 10 who had a lot of freedom, didn't really translate into to this season, which is leads us up to, obviously, he got that injury and then leads us into the conversation of um, why it didn't quite work out under Clement in the first instance. Yeah, is it maybe based on the fact, I mean, Clement did touch on this uh, and he uh, played them on, on that right-hand side, being light in options over there when he first came in. Of course, we've seen the upturn in form in Ross McCollins over on that side. We know that Oscar Cortez can play out there on that right wing. Scott Wright uh, is an option as well. Uh, and that gives uh, Todd Cantwell the opportunity to move infield, playing his more natural mm -hmm. position, that free role, being able to drift um, where he wants pretty much. Um, whereas uh, the sort of right-hand side experiment uh, is one that I'm sure the manager did say. He may ask him to play there uh, if um, if injuries and what have you um, insist that he doesn't have, uh, he has limited options. But uh, certainly over on the right, it doesn't suit him, does it, Joshua? No, and I've got here a gift, Derek. Now, the gift's going to just play out. So, if, if people, again, people can pause it, but hopefully uh, this will, will give people a bit of a, a viewpoint of what we're discussing. So, this is the, the flashpoint against Aris, as I've called it. So, the ball goes out wide. I'll play it from the start again. Ball goes out wide to Campwell. Uh, Sifuentes runs beyond. Campwell runs into traffic. Um, doesn't play the ball into the space where Sifuentes is running, which is probably what Clement would, would want him to do. Yes. Almost actually keeps the ball, but loses the ball. Rangers lose the ball in a position where Clement would want them to lose the ball. I'll, I'll play it through one more time for people, um, because they're not protected to they're they're not set up to protect against the transition. Um, so why did Cantwell play on the right in the start? 
an element of pragmatism, um, I think, because Rangers, as you say, didn't have a natural option out there. And I think Clermont wanted to protect um, Ross McCausson somewhat. Camwell was coming back from injury as well. But I also think, and then this ties us into what we're going to talk about, his number 10 position now. I also think it's because what Clermont wants in that number 10 position, Derek, which is different to what Beale wants. It's not as positionally free. You've got two wide wingers, which makes it slightly different. Um, there's more of a requirement, I think, to be a second striker than a connector through the thirds. Um, so if, if we look, for example, um, and we'll touch on the right and, and maybe why it didn't work as well, I think just one more time on this example, Campbell shifting off his right-hand side. He's not a two-way winger on this side because he's not going to be explosive explosive and go up the wing. I think that's why you've got the option of Sifuentes is running that kind of tactical setup. Um, he's not able to protect the ball with his left leg and kind of right challenges. The way I always think of Campbell is a bit like Grealish in that way, where he's not got loads of tricks. But as he said, when he's, he's, his dribbling style is based and his touches uh, off yeah. defenders, it's more about riding tackles and, and maybe being inventive and, 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 and dribbling in quite a specific type of way. If we look at the number 10 role under Clermont, um, and, and this again is a pass network, this is actually the game uh, Aberdeen last weekend. Now, again, you, you notice the difference firstly between Beal's system and this, Derek. Rangers are pretty dominant, so you've still got pretty high fullbacks, but look how high Campbell is, the number 10 now. Now he's ahead of the striker. Now the wingers are up there as well. Um, and again, this is a very offensive midfield setup, but the point being that the requirement is is, is different. Clement's tactical style, I think, is more direct in the build up, it's quicker. He doesn't want lateral passes in the middle, as he reminded us at his first press conferences. There's wingers. Um, it's very, very different. And, and I think a key point is his off-ball position. Campbell now is the kind of second player. He's the second striker off the ball, and that translates into his position. When he when uh, when Rangers do win the ball, he's high up the pitch next to Fabio Silva or Cyril Dessers with the two wingers dropping back, as we've seen with Sima especially, to offer a defensive cover. It's more positionally strict. Um, and if, if you look at, for example, here's the passes uh, that Campbell's received in the last four or five games. I think it's five games playing as a number 10. Now, I'll go back to the first one under Beal. But again, I think you can see from the first instance, Derek, how different this is. Now, this is a successful pass as he's received in league games in, in, in 2024. Hardly any in his own half. A lot more around the box. Some are more direct. Uh, a lot towards the right as well. But if I just flick back quickly to, the again, him playing number 10 under Beal. You can just see it's very wow. different. Yes, yeah, it's 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 it's, it's, uh, it's and and that's because the build up is different, you know. And and I think Rangers will have a way to go to to improve that over time. I think that's something that um, they will need to improve. Probably it takes a preseason uh, to to maybe go through the midfield more than they have been at points. But you just see there, it, it's different. So to 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 quote Campbell himself, he said uh, last weekend. I'll go back to that past network. Um, it's been tough. A lot of people forgot that I was out for two and a half to three months. There's always a lot of noise about me, and I know I'm a player who invites that type of thing. But as long as supporters are seeing the good things, then it's all right. I'm playing centrally as so number 10 now, and I'm giving out the numbers that I think I can do. Obviously, he's got four goals and, and five league starts this year, Derek. The manager knows what my best position is. His words to me were, when I first came in, we had a few injuries. Um, listen, I'm playing in a position I like, and I think I'm showing it as my best position. However, the thing that is clear is I'm playing in a, as a different number 10 than I was before. It's a different style, a different way of playing. You can see that I'm not being asked to play the way I was last season. I see a lot of comments, Todd's not getting involved, Todd's not doing this, but I'm being asked to play differently and it is working. The numbers are coming. I'm enjoying myself, uh, so let's just enjoy it. So then, Derek, if we skip forward, um, what, what, what is this difference? How are we seeing this? Firstly, you look at the, the, the base number of stats. This is Campbell's... Um, his shot map. Now he's overperformed his XG by about two, so I don't expect him to, to necessarily mm. continue this scoring rate. But his expected goals has jumped from 0 0.24 to 0 0.37 from uh, before um, New Year to, to after New Year. Um, his expected goals per shot, which is just how threatening each shot is, has jumped from 0 0.11 to 0 0.17. And finally, his deep progressions, which is just getting the ball into the final third, has dropped by about 1.5 from 6.7 to 5.3. So wh why is the role different? Um, it's a bit more positionally strict. Rangers are building play in a different way. I think it's a mixture of Campwell adapting his game to Clermont, and maybe we forget that's why I didn't play number 10 in the first instance. I'm just hypothesizing there. I don't know. Yeah. Um, but also... I think Clermont is starting to, to get more out of Campbell in that position. And when he was asked about him last week in the press conference, he said, I see him growing. He's doing more and uh, much more of what is necessary for the team. And he starts to understand better the story. Now, I think it's important to caveat, Derek, that 
Campbell's a really hard-working player, and that always shows up in the, the pressure numbers. There's also an element to him that he is a bit of a maverick, a bit of an individualist in the way he plays, but that's what makes him good, isn't it? That That's why he's he's, he's been able to provide moments, and, and, and I guess sometimes maybe as a footballer, your strength can also be your weakness at points, and it just takes a period of, of adaptation to, to show it. So just to, to finish, I've got a few examples of uh, the key themes that I think we're, we're seeing of, of why that number 10 role is different, mainly being you're seeing Cantwell run beyond the striker more and drop into the opposition, uh, to, sorry, to his own half less, as we saw in, in that pass network. He's receiving between the lines a lot more. I think that's his best trait is, is how he receives between the lines and very quickly shifts his body and, and, and works in tight spaces. Um, he's getting on the ball higher up the pitch and he's starting as, as, as one of the highest too. So again, I'll, I'll play these gifts through a few times and just discuss what I think uh, you're seeing with it. This is the goal against uh, Aberdeen last week. The thing that stood out to me here was he doesn't move towards the ball. Fabio yeah. Silva, again, I'll play it through again, but Fabio Silva is the one who drops off with Tom Lawrence, and it's Todd Cantwell who's the one who runs beyond, recognising that's the moment to, to get into the box, and that's ultimately how he scores. I think that's what Clements wants from his, his mm -hmm. number 10 position. If we move on to a goal he scored against Livingston, I think this is a perfect example. I'll go back to the start with this. This, is, this goal is a perfect example of what Clement wants from his number 10, again, hypothesizing, um, again, playing against a team who are sitting deep. All of Livingston's players are in their own half. Ryan Jack plays a fantastic pass, but again, you can just tell frame by frame, you see how quickly Cantwell turns milliseconds, but he manages to shift his body. That tracks out the left back, gives space for Ross McCausland, and then crucially continues his run into the box to score. It's something that Scott Arfield always said in the press about Todd Campbell. He needs to get his numbers up. James Tavenier said he's always encouraging him to get into that number 10 spot as well. But I think that's that's what you want from him in that position. It's a skill to receive in that position between the lines. It's a skill to be able to turn so quickly in one motion. And then the, the, the necessary bit is being a being ruthless, I guess, and getting into to the penalty box. And just uh, two more examples, Derek. Similar against Hibbs, this goal he scored away. I thought this was a good example of him taking his uh, anger out in a game in the right way because obviously yeah. being bundled over by the, the touchline. Ross McCausland is the one who's deeper. Where is Campbell? High between the lines, same line as the striker. Again, receiving high, turning quickly, turning in one motion, attempts a shot from range that, that goes in. But very similar themes. Instead of dropping towards the ball, which might have been his natural inclination, Rangers are building more directly. He's the one that's high through the lines and obviously gets a goal. Um, and I think that is actually my, my final example there. But all, all, all very similar themes, uh, Derek, that, that I think um, that show how that role is, 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 is differentiated from being the player under Beale who everything was based around and, and he moved towards the ball more, slightly slower. It was more maybe relational. It was about relationships with other players. I still think Clement will want to get the best out of him. And I think you're seeing that this year. We don't know what's going to happen long term. We're merely kind of commentating on what's happened over the past five games. Um, I think you still need to see it in games like the old firm because that's just how you, you cement your legacy at a, a, a team like Rangers. Um, yeah. But even just coming off the bench there, just to my last example, coming off the bench against there, I thought, one, you saw him have a bit more of a spring in his step. And again, similar themes. Look at where he receives the ball between the lines, given the pass an option, turning with his back to goal, basing his touches off what the defender thinks. So I think that's why we're starting to see a little bit more of him, probably a, a mixture of him learning what Clement wants, and maybe as well Clement learning how to get the best out of him in that number ten role. And obviously, we'll see, we'll see if it continues uh, over the next month or two. Rangers will certainly hope that this form does. Yeah, let's let's hope it does. Uh, outstanding analysis there, Joshua. Thank you very much uh, for that. Incidentally, you can uh, read uh, the piece uh, over on the website as well that goes into de detail about uh, Todd Cantnell's upturn in form. I'll stick the link in the description below, so do go and check it out. Uh, as uh, we touched on at the start of the show, it's something we're hoping to do more of uh, going forward. Hopefully you enjoyed that, folks. Uh, and uh, yeah, there will be more to come your way. Incidentally, just uh, looking ahead, to tonight we'll be back for uh, as usual all the pre-match and post-match uh, videos coming your way hopefully rangers will get the, the job done against ross county tonight an opportunity to go top of the premiership table which is uh, quite incredible really uh, thanks joshua and uh, we'll speak to you a little later on bye for now